You're all very welcome back to episode 3 of Lineborn. Just take a moment to thank everybody who has watched the videos so far and has subscribed. If you're new to the channel, you are very welcome. Don't forget to subscribe. Let's head over to the bench now and see what the next step in this process is. Okay, before we go over to the Colchester and start doing some line boring, we need to turn this into a boring bar. If you want to see how we got this far making these bushings, we'll put a link to episode 1 and 2 on the screen now for you. To turn this into a boring bar, we need to first of all get a cutter in here. The cutter we're going to use is one of these TCM boring bars. I like to use this because it uses a TCMT carbide insert which I know will work really well with this cap and it should work pretty well with a cast iron block as well. So we need to bore a hole at a right angle through the bar that will fit this cutter and we also need to bore two holes and thread them at right angles to that hole to fit these grub screws to hold the boring head. We have another operation to carry out in this bar as well, we need to drive it. We're going to do that by fitting a universal joint in one end of it here, holding that with a set screw and then that will transfer drive from the chuck of the lathe to the boring bar and allow us to drive our cut. Let's go over to the milling machine now and get this part done. Okay, we're set up over here at the milling machine now to perform a couple of operations. The first is we're gonna mill a flat across the top of this bar, then we will find the center of it, and then we're going to go slightly off center to drill our hole through for our cutter. I want the cutter to be slightly off center from the bar on the high side so that if the chip or the cutter is to bind up in the bore, it will force the cutter away from the material. If you run your cutter on center or slightly below, and the cutter is to bind up in the bore, it will dig the cutter into the bore of the block. We don't want that. The next operation we will have to do then is turn the bar exactly through 90 degrees and mill another flat here, and then drill two holes for our set screws. How I'm going to do that is with this setup here. I have a block clamped to the bar, I have a toe clamp clamping another block to the vise. That's giving me a lateral stop in this direction, but this block is also going to serve a second purpose. When I have this flat milled, I'm going to loosen the vise, turn this bar through 90 degrees, and I will know I've turned through 90 degrees when the face of this aluminium stock lines up with the other face of this block. That will give me a nice easy way of getting this bar turned perfectly through 90 degrees and then we can bore our holes. Okay, what we have here is the center drill in the chuck of the milling machine. I know this is a ground surface at 11 millimeters. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to bring in the bar on the cross feed of the milling machine until it just bumps the center drill. I'm feeling resistance on the quill, I know I'm there. Now what I want is I want the tip of this in the center of the bar. The center of the bar is 15 millimeters and the center of this bit would be 5.5. So if we put those together we get 20.5. So if I move the cross feed of the milling machine in 20.5 millimeters, I will be in the center of the bar. I know one turn of this feed wheel is 2.5 is millimeters. So if I turn this feed wheel eight times, I will be at 20.5 millimeters. So let's do that. Seven, eight. That puts us on center of the bar, but we want to be slightly past center of the bar for our cutter to work right. So let's feed in another 0.5 millimeters. Okay, we fed in 0.5 millimeters. Now we're slightly off center of the bar and we're ready to start drilling.
Okay, so we have turned our barn bar to 90 degrees. We've set it back up over here again with these two bits of square stock. Uh, we ran a ream through the bore just at the very end, uh, which now means that we have a really good fit up on our cutter. The next thing we need to do is to bore two holes and thread them M6 to take our grub screws to pinch down this uh, cutter while it's in the cutting motion. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the milling cutter here to put a small flat at the front edge and a small flat at the middle for the drill to find its center and then we'll drill and tap the holes. Okay, so I'm gonna bore a hole here in the end of the bar, put a M8 thread for another set screw to hold the U-joint from the drive we're gonna get from the Colchester. I'm gonna show you a trick that I learned here off Keith Fenner uh, for really quickly eyeballing up the center of a bar like this. This hole doesn't need to be critically 100% in the center of the bar, it just needs to be close in order to get the most amount of material we can to clamp this drive. So this is a trick Keith showed me before he uses uh, his little steel rule I can't find mine at the moment so I have a piece of shim stock here which is going to do the same job so the trick is that you put the shim stock on the bar and you put your uh, cutting bit on the shim stock and what you can see now is is that the shim stocks is lying over so you stand to one end and eyeball it and you move it until the shim stock is sitting parallel with your uh, milling machine table so we're pretty much sitting dead on parallel there. And that tells us now we're in the center of the bar to drill our hole. Okay, we're finished up now. We have our set screws in here to hold our boring bar. The boring bar is bored through. We've also bored the hole here in the end of the bar to put our set screw in to hold our universal joint. We'll head up to the Colchester now and bore the end of this. Okay, we're back over at the engine block now. We have our boring bar back inside the bushings and it's moving nice and freely. You can see we have the cutter installed and it's held with our two set screws, which gives us adjustability to set the depth of cut. We also have our universal joint in installed here in this end to give us drive. It's held here with our set screw. In the next installment in this series, we're going to bore two more holes in this engine block to hold this cap down. And we're also gonna make up a bearing for the Colchester to hold this boring shaft in place to give us lateral trust holding when we start our line boring operations. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>